Lovers, welcome to another episode of the Raga Room with Deepa Joshi. The morning will surely come, the darkness will vanish, and thy voice pour down in golden streams breaking through the sky. Then thy words will take wing in songs from every one of my birds' nests, and thy melodies will break forth in flowers in all my forest groves. A quote by Rabindranath Tagore, who regarded music as a source of uniting natural phenomena to soul. Oh God, music is present in all living beings, a sound that draws attention to the inner self, a source of sound, nada. While it is hard to trace when music came into existence, it is certain that Indian classical music is one of the oldest and established musical traditions in the world. When the origin is traced back to history, Indian classical music goes back to Vedic times. Among the four Vedic scriptures, Samaveda is known to be musically based. Beginning from the Vedas, Indian classical music has evolved since centuries with the demographical influences. Great poet saints who chose to communicate in their regional languages brought forth a bhakti movement with the compositions of Surdas, Tulsidas, Kabir Dohe, Meera Bhajans, and so many more in the north. Their southern counterparts, Purandaradasa, Kanakadasa, and several other saints with their simplistic style propagated the message of living life right with their compositions, a growing cultural movement since centuries that has stimulated and satiated our souls with sadhakas of music world. From centuries, we have witnessed a galaxy of musicians that have left an indelible mark on our minds creating a rich cultural legacy for many future generations to explore. While it is certainly delightful to see classical music reaching a greater audience with the help of social media currently, let's take a look at how its authenticity is maintained with changing times. We are fortunate to have with us Pandit Dr. Nagraja Havaldar, our esteemed guest, who will talk to us about maintaining the authenticity of classical music during contemporary times. Pandit Nagra Jav Havaldar is one of the leading vocalists of Hindustani classical music in India. Dr. Havaldar has had extensive training in the tradition of Kirana Gharana from Pandit Madhav Guri, a prime disciple of the Kirana Gharana Sayon, Pandit Bhim Sen Joshi. He has also had immense training in the tradition of Jaipura Trolli Gharana from Pandit Panchakshari Swami Matigatti a senior disciple of Pandit Malikarjun Mansur. He holds the Sangeet Ratna degree in Hindustani classical music from Karnataka University, Dharwad. A gold medalist in Master of Arts in History and Archaeology, Dr. Havaldar also holds a doctorate in music from Karnataka University, his doctorate thesis being History of Music in Karnataka and the Legacy of Mysore Maharaja Towards Its Growth. Dr. Havaldar is a pioneer in popularizing the Kannada Khayal by adapting the vachanas, the literary works of Hari Dasa and suitable contemporary poetry in Kannada to the traditional Khayal form. Conceptualized by him and directed by T. N. C. Taram, Ragadhare, a television series broadcast on Duradarshan, stands as an exemplary in bringing the Kannada Khayal to limelight. Another of his concepts, Varadhare, a Duradarshan television series researched, mentored and presented by him and produced by the Azim Premji University presents the biographies of some of Karnataka's great musicians. The Bhagavad Gita, translated to Kannada by N. R. Rao and sung by Dr. Havaldar to melodies based on ragas, is a unique effort to bring the Gita to a wider audience. He has published an album of eight raga recitals for the Nimhans to assist their research on music therapy for children. He has also performed at the Tihar Jail for the benefit of the inmates. Additionally, he has published numerous of his khayal and devotional compositions over the decades. Dr. Havaldar 
has been nominated by the president of india as a member of the first court committee sikkim central university dr havaldar has widely traveled for concerts and lecture demonstrations within india and abroad he has performed all over india including prestigious venues such as the hampi utsava the dasara darbar festival in mysore the sankat mochan sangeet samaroh in varanasi the savai gandharva bhimsen mahotsav in pune and the shankar lal festival in delhi in the usa he has performed at the world kannada conference world music festival world veerashaiva conference boston vachana conference etc he has gathered critical acclaim with his performance at numerous venues such as san francisco los angeles new york new jersey and yale university dr havildar has twice been the guest teacher at the bharatiya vidya bhavan london and has also performed at the london international arts festival among many others a prolific writer he has also authored several books and contributed articles to various leading kannada papers and weekly magazines a selection of his articles from the column was subsequently compiled and published as varasanyathi padalagu tiruva kaladalli shastriya sangeetha published by the kannada university hampi explored the nature of indian classical music in changing times however his magnum opus is his recent semi biographical bharat ratna pandit bhimsen joshi the voice of the people this is an english rewrite of his earlier kannada work on pandit bhimsen joshi name named bharat ratna pandit bhimsen joshi navo nevo kandampe dr havaldar has been honored with several awards for his contribution to indian classical music some of them being the arya bhatta award the salt lake music festival sangeet ratna award panchakshari gawai memorial award nirman purandar sangeet ratna award and vishwa kala sangha sangeet award adding to his many awards the kannada state government sangeet and ritya academy has recently conferred him the prestigious karnataka kalashri award for the year it is indeed a great pleasure and privilege to talk to dr havaldar at the raga room a well, very warm welcome to the raga room pandit ji it is a great pleasure to have a great musician like yourself at the raga room it's my privilege to share my thoughts with you all pandit ji you have been a tremendous influence to so many myself included and as you are aware I attended one of your concerts when you came to Detroit. After that, there has been no looking back uh, in my life in terms of music. Your wisdom, your sadhana, your strength of communication makes it so endearing for the listener to absorb and appreciate your music. And when we have a stalwart like yourself who can talk about any gamut of music, I guess one can only start at the beginning to understand uh, the crux of music, the essential of it. so where does music begin pandit ji music according to me is a very very intuitive art form very intuitive instinctive art form and it starts with imitation you listen to a good song and you keep uh, uh, imitating that and the next stage is uh, repetition you keep repeating the same song again and again and again uh, in every given opportunity and the third stage the imitation repetition the third stage is creation provided you go to a good guru and start learning from a maestro pledge your life pledge your thoughts pledge your sadhana your time dedication everything so that he takes you on the path to creation so that's how it starts absolutely pandit ji uh, your uh, entry into music began with the song that you heard from the movie sandhya raga yeah nambe de ninna nada devate de nambe de ninna nada devate abhiman tale de taaye bharate abhiman tale de taaye bharate Uh, please tell us how your journey began and how it progressed please well uh, my parents uh, used to sing my father ram rao and my mother anuja bai they would uh, sing the kannada devotional songs which were traditionally tuned into raga and well structured into thada but 
given their very very humble background meeting two ends from the early childhood was a big challenge for them so therefore they didn't get an opportunity to go and learn from uh, any teacher methodically but whatever they sang they were well within sur and ta swara matta taaladalle haadta idaru so that uh, left a bigger impact on me to the extent i would sing all uh, aarti songs that my mother would uh, sing uh, all gauri songs during the shravan mass and so on and so forth to the extent that uh, after singing a song she would pray to the goddess gauri that please make me suhagan for the rest of my life <laughs> as a boy i also would blindly say that at the end of the song make me <laughs> suhagan for the rest of my life i didn't even know that that was meant only for women but <laughs> so was the influence by my parents that's part one and uh, secondly uh, radio was the big source uh, to listen to music and uh, as you rightly said uh, pandit bhimsen joshi who originally hails from karnataka as uh, most of us know uh, he sang one song for a karana movie called sandhya raga uh, that was really somewhere in 1966 i was a boy of 6 or 7 years old then so one song he sang in that based on rock puriya kalyan left an indelible impact on my heart and soul so i made up my mind okay if i have to sing in my life i have to sing like this no matter what i did not know what it takes to do like that but that left an impact and fortunately fortunately uh, i did accomplish uh, learning from the same school from his disciple pandit madhav gudi who learned from pandit bhim chand ji for 28 long years that's my direct association with the pandit ji uh, other than that i also did uh, sangeet ratna six years uh, course in hindustani classical music at karnataka university dharwad where malikarjun mansur was head of the department pandit rajguru pandit sangmeshwar gurav pandit panchakshari mattigatti dr gangubai hangal kg ginde you name it all the star words were the visiting professors and honorary faculty there so i was the most pampered student in the music department during my sangeet ratna wow to be in association uh, even just to be in the environment learning comes next i guess just to be in the environment we absorb so much and we learn so much we pick up so much from uh, the association of good people in our lives uh, pandit ji true uh, you know learn, again uh, how much a student invests in learning is important their love for the craft is important their love for um, taking it to the next level is important so in terms of that uh, when we talk about training when we talk about learning or investing our time in in our passion please share your thoughts on what is important for uh, students who are pursuants of music to have in mind that is important to them well to be a professional musician it's not a part time commitment at all be it learning or being a performer it is a full time plunge so you have to be in with music 24 by 7 around the clock to the extent uh, my guru ji pandit madhavadi learned raag todi at 2 am in the morning when bhim singh joshi taught him so um, you never know what comes to the guru's mind and when he wants to impart those things to you so you have to be always a listener always an imbiber always an observer and my guru madhavadi used to say that uh, his guru bhim singh ji would also teach him in a, in a car when he was driving when pandit ji was driving he would use the horn both as a shruti and also as the metronome wow. and uh, teach some nuances of some raga even while driving so therefore uh, it is a full time commitment uh, therefore i would strongly recommend any student not to look at music as a past time hobby per se unless you just want to keep it as a hobby but if you want to be a performer there is no shortcut there i, I should uh, also tell you one small thing ustad abdul karim khan sahab uh, the guru of uh, pandit uh, sawai gandharva sawai gandharva is the guru of bhim sen and uh, kangu bai and firoz dasto so uh, ustad abdul karim khan when he opened uh, started arya sangeet vidyalaya in early 1900s so he would take a written commitment from the student that he or she would learn for at least 7 years at least 7 years he would not make a mention of the fee part of it 
he was not very insistent on the fee but he would demand the time and total commitment from the student so that he can impart at least some basic minimum uh, elements and the nuances of the classical music so that the student can think about it later and carry forward to the next legacy to the next generation just like a, a development of any relationship a relationship between a guru and shishya also takes some time to understand one another a guru understands based on the caliber of a shishya and his uh, interest what needs to be imparted and how much he needs to uh, learn or train so i guess that amount of time is definitely required for anybody to uh, pursue whatever it is that they are doing we have to give ourselves time there is no shortcut we have to follow this route to get to our destination uh, pandit ji you did mention uh, about todi rak todi when your guru pandit madhavgudi was with pandit bhimsen joshi and during one of your concerts i remember that you had uh, shared this anecdote about uh, rak todi and that was one of the best rak todis you had mentioned that your guru pandit madhavgudi had learned so if you don't mind can i please ask you to uh, pandit bhimsen ji taught my guru pandit madhavgudi till 1 am early in the morning on a given night rag darbari and then he said okay theek hai tum ja ke so jao and he would uh, pandit ji was staying in a rented house those days and uh, madhavguri ji would sleep in a passage that would lead to the restaurant so he went and slept there and after that pandit ji took a book and he wanted to read a novel complete the novel he went through few pages and uh, suddenly the power went off he said okay let me call it a day then go to sleep so he wants to use the restroom and uh, en route the restroom he finds something obstructing his feet he's yeah. Sur- surprised what is this what is happening here then he calls uh, his wife he he can't hear kaun hai yahan par what is happening here she says come on he is madhuri is madhuri or his disciple sleeping there then bimsen ji got angry what has he come here for he has come here to sleep or to, to learn music <laughs> he cannot be sleeping so he he brought a bucket of cold water in pune during the month of december which is very very cold <laughs> poured it on him didn't even allow him to wipe then told him come on go and get the tan pura and run teach your rak todi so he started teaching rak todi but it was already remembered this anecdote this episode with absolute gratitude while he was aware that he was shivering in the beginning few uh, hour tens or a few notes for all andolik because of the cold but as the class as the momentum built up he said that's one of the most immortal todis i ever uh, ever heard you are being taught so with actual gratitude you would remember that todi so this is the kind of relation so the present day situation people may uh, think like child abuse or um, student <laughs> guilt treated or any lack of any other term but that's how he imbibed the best part of the todi if we have a trust and if we know that they mean the best for us they are investing this time in us because they know that we are capable of doing it i guess there is no room for misunderstanding at all we will blindly believe our gurus and we know our gurus know the best for us and we will continue in that road what an interesting experience pandit ji thank you so much for sharing and uh, you know every time whenever you sing i get lost in some world this has happened many times and uh, i have been um, a great fan of yours since 2011 i think and uh, there is not a single time that i listen to your music and it has such a tremendous impact on my mind and i'm so uh, grateful that i am in your association where i can learn and uh, appreciate music and uh, things like that uh, pandit ji again the power of the music itself it does not belong to the individual uh, we are only the medium through which all the influence all the impact all the all the tradition uh, goes on to the next generation so it does not belong to us please go ahead communication is also important right pandit ji to be able to connect with the audience and when you uh, narrate these anecdotes and when you make connections you make it so easy for people to understand the grammar and the basics of music which is really important which will uh, turn many people in towards uh, 
the music side. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, we have also talked in the past about musical performances where music performance is a step in music process where the musical ideas are re realized and uh, transmitted to a listener. Uh, please talk to us about the correlation between musician and his or her performance. Well, uh, performance uh, uh, is only an extension of uh, what you do at home. Of course, you are neatly dressed, you are more presentable uh, because you are there in front of the people. That's one part. But uh, by and large, uh, sometimes you can make a distinction between when you are being taught by your guru, what you are doing is slightly different. And when you are doing the riyas on your own, that is different and when you are performing that is slightly different though the raga could be the same the bandish could be the same that's part one then also secondly what is the relation between the raga and the artist himself is the first question we have to answer ourselves because we cling on to x number of ragas for the rest of our life and keep singing it again and again and again and there is no fatigue of repetition, there is no threat of repetition at all. Uh, to be honest with you, one of my Gurujis, uh, Panchakshari Swami Mantigati, who lived for 84 years of age. So he would uh, start his uh, daily talim, daily riyas with Raj Bhaira. He would sing Raj Bhaira for 30-40 minutes in the morning, then go to the next raga. That means it has so much to offer on a daily basis. You are never tired of singing the same ragas again and again. What is the relation between the raga and the artist? Is it just a scale? Is it just a composition? Is that uh, your skill, your expertise that you have sung it X number of times so that you can sing it fast, you can sing it for 40 minutes, 50 minutes, that apart. As a student of music and as a student of history, what I've realized is the ragas they grow upon you, they relate to you at four different stages, four different levels. When you start learning a raga, could be bhairo or todi, it will be like your parent. It will hold your fingers and take you around. Even if you made a small mistake, it will allow you to stay. It won't abandon you. So, you start feeling comfortable with that sense of love and affection and bondage. So, it stays as your parent. If you pursue the same raga for some more length of time, few more years, it will become your school friend, your schoolmate. Wherein, oh, nice. wherein slightly you have a little more freedom, little more bondage, little more acquaintance, a little more new areas to deal with, to play with and to make mutually known. So this, the second stage is it becomes your friend, the raga becomes your friend. Then if you pursue the same raga for a few more years till you are an adult, 
may be into the middle of your adulthood it will become your life partner wow so your relation with the raga is almost like a life partner you can quarrel with her you can you can love her you can greet her you can feed her she can feed you uh, she can do everything that you want you can be mutually complimenting so on and so forth see what you share with your parents is different what you share with your school friend is different and what you share with your life partner is different though the individual being the same so the raga remains the same the swaras remain the same but as you grow up into these three relations your way of looking at it your interpretation your understanding your presentation goes on changing and the fourth important stage that i have understood myself is if you pursue the same raga till you are into your mid 60s or as long as you want wish to you have a chance of becoming the parent of the raga ah so i am telling you extraordinary care and responsibility wow if if you pursue the same raga for so many years you have a fair or remote chance of becoming the parent of the raga whereas you can take the raga around the swaras will obey you the laya will obey you the bandish will be yours but it requires enormous 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 dedication interaction introspection practice and self realization it's almost like uh, we being the children as our parents grow older we tend to become their parents we we want to take care of their needs etc it's exactly like that given this background now you come on to the performance stage hmm. performance is like you have you have achieved so much of uh, mastery or excellence or a zone of comfort with the ragas and the taras to be presenting it to the people is another responsibility so you have to build a rapport between your listener and yourself and the raga also has to talk to your listeners so it's an enormous responsibility uh, performance is a different challenge altogether uh, you may get distracted by anything right from a, a howling microphone to a flickering light or somebody speaking in the front row or somebody <laughs> picking up a cell phone in between so with all that not with standing all the distractions etc it's an enormous responsibility for you to uh, communicate and convey what you have inherited over years or decades that's part one it is also a socio cultural responsibility for you to build a bridge between the listener and the music the musician the raga and the tradition that's what performance is all about wow how beautifully said and uh, you just talked about the time the patience and uh, the drive it takes to build that relationship like when you talked about uh, first it is your school friend then it becomes your life partner then you become a parent uh, one needs a lot of determination and one needs to have that patience to get to a certain level and for Uh, whoever has attained that i can imagine what a nice place it is in their minds to be in that only the ones who experience will know the beauty of it the best right. part is you have to remember all the four stages of your relation with the raga and then you you are never uh, let down by the raga yes um uh, also we uh, as we were talking about uh, socio cultural responsibility that you uh, usually you always talk about and somewhere bringing in a correlation between art and patronage and their correlation uh, if you could also please share your insights on that pandit ji the the days of royal patronage have gone now music is supported by a true listener a passionate listener or some set of people who congregate together and form an association and tend to support the art form uh that is one point that is present present situation and the government also can uh, reasonably contribute as a ministry of culture in uh, every state and uh, they have some uh, specified programs to promote the art and the artists but it's really really the artist himself who has to sustain 
and who has to withstand all the uncertainties. Uh, to the extent, uh, I, ha I have met all the great people. I have met Pandit Bhimchen Ji, I have met Gangubai Hangal, I have met Malikavan Mansur Ji, I have met uh, Basavaraj Rajura, I have met Kumar Gandharva, I have met Jaisraj, I have met Balamurli. I can go on giving the names. None of them came from an affluent economic background. Part one. And when they started learning music, they didn't even know that they would be paid if they sang. <laughs> Tell me uh, which professional as of today can go to his office work without knowing what he is paid for how much, and how much is he paid. On the contrary, I am telling you very honestly, if I have 20 concerts in a year, of course, due to Corona, things are different. Now, that apart, uh, if I had 20 to 30 concerts in a year, at least 15 to 20 of them, let me tell you honestly, I did not know how much I am going to be paid. At the end of the concert, they will give me an envelope, I will take it with utmost happiness and share it with my teammates and come back home and start my practice all, to, all over again. So it is that kind of commitment. So the, the, the patronage of course has been there, but the inner drive for you to sustain the, the, is because uh, the first thing that happens to a musician is you enjoy it yourself. You, then yeah. with, with due respect to your audience and everybody, your sponsor or whoever it is, if they also enjoy your music, they like your music, they call you again, it is a byproduct. Yeah. That's not the artist's main intention at all. With due respect to my sponsors, my students, my listeners, everybody I'm telling you. So the, as they say, charity begins at home. So the enjoyment begins with you. You start enjoying what you're singing. And that uh, coolly spreads like a fragrance of a flower around. Because the flower does not know who is going to put it in the head or <laughs> does it go to a temple. But its natural quality is to just blossom like this and spread the fragrance. So music also does the same thing, artists also does the same thing. So you just unfold yourselves, you enjoy yourselves and the others like it. And let me also tell you honestly, the people have been extraordinarily generous to me, kind to me. Uh, they call me, they host me, whether inside or outside the country. They shower all their love and affection and care. They look after my needs, so on and so forth. So to the best of my ability, I try to sing and they try to enjoy. But basically, it has to start within. Um, as you were talking about, uh, you know, your performances, they're electrifying. Uh, no, there is not one single moment where uh, uh, the audience is not engaged. Uh, to be in a performance like that, to be in a concert like that, it changes people's lives actually. And uh, I, and myself included, I, I have experienced that. So uh, thank you for sharing these thoughts, Pandiji. And you talked about, you know, having met with uh, the greatest stalwarts, being in their association. Uh, like, again, like you said, when we start um, ta uh, telling the names, the, the, the list is endless. So when we are talking about musicians of that caliber, now you have seen in the past decades the progression, the new musicians, the new generation of people coming up. And uh, today, with I guess with the advent of internet, a lot of things are available to many people. So with all of the resources available, and I think a lot of things has also changed in terms of the newer generation where they have the liberty, they have the encouragement from their home, their parents to pursue anything that is close to them. Uh, with all of these things available to us today, these tools and resources, do we still uh, see that caliber? Do we still see that determination in the new set of musicians that are coming uh, up? Well, the names I quoted the, of the yesterday years, they uh, lived in a different era. I'm, I'm talking about the, the socio-cultural transition that we have seen in the past few decades as against they lived. Uh, for, for example, one of my friends who grew up in Pune uh, as a student, he is elder to me by 10 years. So he would say that during the Ganesh festival in Pune, 10 days, 
uh, they call the different suburbs in Pune as Shukrawar Pet, Shaniwar Pet, uh, li like we call it as Kormangala and Basavangudi and uh, Ban Shankari in Bangalore. So the different extensions, 10 extensions of Pune would have the performances of Kishori Amonkar, Hirabai Brodekar, Bhim Sain Joshi, Jitendra Bisheki, Jeshraj, Bismillah Khan, Vilayat Khan, you name all the big names, you will find all the 10 names uh, in different parts of the city. And the next day they would swap the venues. Yeah. Uh, somebody who performed in Koramangala will go to Jainagar the next day and somebody who performed in Jainagar today will go to Sheshadipuram the next day. So basically, 10 days of Ganesh festival, you are spoiled for choice. Where do you, yes. whether you would go to Hirabai Madhavdekar or you will go to Kesrabai or Kishori or Bhim Sen or Jeshraj, you are spoiled for choice. Yeah. And quite possible that a very serene and sensitive listener like Deepa Joshi, who came to my concert today in Sheshad Dupuram, she might follow me to Kaur Mangla next day. I am aware of that. So I have to excel myself to make my audience happy. That's part one. And to be singing in the congregation and galaxy of 10 people like this in the same town every day, you have to really excel yourselves. Otherwise, next year you will not be called. So this was the situation, probably 40, 50 years ago. On the contrary, uh, with due respect to whatever is happening to Ganesh festivals nowadays, the city I am living in now, Bangalore, uh, I don't expect myself to be singing in every Ganesh festival every year in every venue, but I have sung for only three uh, performances, only three venues in the last 30 years. So tell me, how, how does the ratio go? All other different mm -hmm. kinds of forms have taken over the pure classical music. So I'm not, see, see the entire universal music is in seven notes. I'm aware of that. Yeah, uh, yeah. You call it a Sarigama Pavanisa, Doremi Fasolati, that is Western, Indian, Carnatic, Hindustani, folk, film, all can be encapsulated in seven swaras. But, in what order you organize those swaras, it assumes a particular form and it uh, consumes a particular length of time you have to master that. So therefore, uh, so giving respect to all forms of music. Now there are two things. Uh, for any artist to become a legend, as you were asking me about the yesteryear's legends and the present scenario. For anybody to become a legend, Absolutely, you have to be born with enormous talent, followed by dedication, perseverance, and your Guru's blessing. That is part one. Then you have to prove it time and again, over a period of time. The longevity of the artist also proves that he or she is a legend. You are not like a uh, Egdin Ka Sultan. There is a famous saying in Hindi, Egdin Ka Sultan. You played and um, played a breathtaking innings in one of the matches and went away, it's not like <laughs> you have to play for 100 tests and prove your metal there. So you have to be singing for 4 to 5 decades and establish your merit, your creativity and your endurance. You have to be born with talent, trained by great guru, prove your length of sustainability and creativity and that comes only by opportunities. So you cannot be sitting in your home and doing your riyas every day and every day and nobody heard you till you are 84. Then, yes. then there is a loss. Ultimately it is the loss of the society. The artist is enjoying himself. If somebody does not notice a piece of uh, diamond which has fallen on the roadside, the diamond does not become a piece of glass. It will still remain as a diamond. But the society is at loss by not recognizing the merit of a wonderful artist. That is what I am saying. Absolutely. Absolutely. With all of this in the background, Panditji, uh, how would you place uh, training or learning music in contemporary times? Uh, how do we maintain the authenticity? Or uh, how do we make sure that we stay on track? Well, you see, uh, learning is an ongoing process, no matter what you are doing, whether it is computer science or cricket or music or 
any discipline you want if you want to achieve excellence you are always a student you can also be a teacher simultaneously but uh, your inner self is always a student that's part one but uh, given the unhealthy race that the human race has waged against time that you want to achieve anything and everything in a quick time see uh, i am a student of history and archaeology apart from being a student of music also so i know uh, history was not written overnight so it takes a while or ages for anybody to create history or to become what he or she is so in the present situation where you have waged a war against unhealthy war against time to give a, a different example like you can make rice in a rice cooker by keeping a rice cooker for 10 minutes previously mm-hmm. if you were to use the conventional uh, igelo lay etc the, the conventional traditional heating system it would take 30 minutes 40 minutes with the advent and invention of cooker you can make rice in 10 or 15 minutes to that extent you have conquered the time from 40 minutes to 10 minutes but further waging a war against time you cannot keep 10 cookers and make rice in <laughs> no, no we cannot so that's not possible no matter what kind of science you evolve what kind of technology you build up so therefore you have to give yourself some time uh, to give an example that happened in my own life 20 years ago uh, one very very young boy who was probably 13 or 14 and his aspiring parents ambitious parents they came to me and uh, they <clears throat> said pandit ji uh, our boy has come to uh, the semi finals of a reality show in music so he has to sing one particular song that is sung by pandit bhim singh joshi in that movie sanjhaaga so yeah. if you nambe den inna nad devate so they requested me if you can teach that song to my son in one week pandit ji we will pay whatever you ask for <laughs> and, and all the teaching sessions will be uh, shot on our video cameras and you will get enormous publicity so pandit ji this is an opportunity for our son to learn that song in one week's time that boy's age itself was 14 years he has never <laughs> seen a live tanpura Okay. He has never seen a conventional tanpura. Uh, that's part one. Then secondly, when Pandit Bhim Singh Ji sang that song for that movie, he was probably in his mid forties. So by that time, he had already put in thirty-five years of uh, learning and introspection and practice and so on and so forth. So they are only looking at the end product, not the effort behind that. So. they want this child to learn that song in one week hmm. i politely told them uh, could you kindly wait for a while i'll i'm going to make a phone call to yuvraj singh the famous cricketer of uh, <laughs> india who hit six sixes in one over so i told them i'm making a phone call to yuvraj singh if he can teach me how to hit six sixes in one over <laughs> i will probably <laughs> pass on the skill of singing that song to your son in one week time so, so i said let me let me check with this instant coffee business if i can pass on this to you so they were very politely at the home and the, so this kind of uh, undue urgency in learning will not help uh, because uh, as i told you the raga can grow with you in four different stages Uh, i will also tell you when pandit bhim singh ji was felicitated in hubli when he turned 60 he tuned the tanpuras after accepting all the blessings from the public the gubai ji and etc etc <clears throat> and tuned the tanpura and he says i am able to see some swaras here and there very vaguely now at the age of 60 oh. अल्लोंद इलोंद नंद स्वरा चले लिखते रहे मुझे अभी अभी एकाद सुर इधर उधर नजर आ रहे हैं ही सेड इफ दैट इज द स्टेटमेंट भीमसेन जी हैज टू से एट द 60 एट द एज ऑफ 
So you can imagine how much time it takes for you to really realize, uh, to master a few ragas, if not all of them. So it has to be a Absolutely. constant pursuit of uh, uh, introspection and your correlation with the raga, and the learning has to be an ongoing process. Absolutely. And also, I think education is a very important thing. When people are educated, when their eyes are open to what it really requires, is when they understand that this is how you achieve the end product, not by having a crash course or an instant uh, way to get to it today. I'll sit for three days and I'll practice this song. I can perform this on a big stage. That's all it takes. Those are the things I think that has to come from education. And when uh, people like yourself, when you talk about these things and give lecture demonstrations, listening to you, we can all um, see that is how things need to be done. Um, again, talking about uh, learning, I know uh, with the onset of COVID for the past one year, a lot of things have changed. Um, many industries have been hard hit and artist community is no different. With that negative impact, also, I guess there has been an interesting development in terms of uh, art blooming uh, with uh, respect to performances or uh, learning or teaching and uh, things like that. So what are your thoughts about the changes in the art scenario, Panditji, with the onset of COVID? Yeah, uh, you rightly made a remark uh, with regard to COVID. You said all the industries have suffered a lot. and. Uh, to be honest with you, at least classical music, from my viewpoint, it's not an industry. Uh, yeah. It is still a very, very uh, secluded, sacred part of the individual perseverance or the perseverance of some group of individuals. Uh, it's not a large scale or an en masse production, that's part of it. Okay. But okay. It, it does, it does come under the influence of all the social changes that occur around us, uh, whether it is COVID or any other form of uh, pandemic that can affect the whole society because we are not insulated from the society, we are a part of the society. We, the classical musicians, are pretty much a flowing part of the society. It has affected us also, uh, only with regard to performances, that's part one. Because people cannot congregate, even if they wish to host a concert, you are not allowed to enter a hall with social distancing and with the very fear of catching infection, so on and so forth. Yes. So yes. The, the listener and the performer interaction and the relation has come to a temporary um, pause, if not halt. That's part one. But at the same time, it has given time for the musicians like us to look into ourselves to introspect ourselves, to, really, to fine-tune ourselves, practice the same raga, same compositions, maybe come up with a different interpretation, different layer, different shades of the uh, improvisation, or, one, or explore some ragas which we have not done in the past. So it has really helped us to grow a little more as an individual artist. That's the benefit that artists have derived directly. Then, the teaching, with regard to teaching, uh, thanks to technology again, uh, with the advent of all this Zoom or Skype or WhatsApp or any other media, a uh, lot of people uh, who have not had a chance to learn music during their younger days. And uh, some people, at least maybe 20 to 30 percent of population in the globe, I am not saying everywhere, in some part of the globe, uh, probably have secured their life financially for the next 30, 40 years. And they are still in their mid 40s or something like that. So such people who did not have a chance to learn music, and they are coming back to music now. Oh. So they are learning music online. Uh, which is not the end in itself or which is not the best way to learn music but instead of being totally disconnected they have a chance to connect with the musician and the style of music that they wanted to learn so they are coming to uh, most of the established musicians like me to fulfill their childhood dreams if not as performers to begin with as students they have made a beginning so it is going on pretty well now. So that is the rosy side of this uh, pandemic. 
wherein people are again working from home, they can draw a line between office and home sometimes, say that I'm not coming to this meeting for uh, these many minutes and they will take the music class, they will strike a balance between the office meeting and the learning, they will record and send me their practice sessions. So therefore, indirectly, this precarious situation also has some positive effect on learning of music and the musicians themselves learning a lot more. As you rightly said, when we, uh, when we know what we want to do, like people like you just mentioned in their 40s who want to pursue it at that time, they know it. They they know that's what they want to do. They come with serious intentions. So those are the people who will actually give it their time, and they will do due diligence to whatever it is that they are planning on learning. Um, this is, I guess, uh, also it helps with the commute. So once we start learning online, even though it's not the best way to learn, but for people who really want to pursue, this cuts your commute time. Uh, you don't have to worry about traveling for so long in the traffic and you can sit in front of your Skype or your Zoom and take those classes. So that is a great benefit. I guess certain things of these things will uh, stay and um, continue to grow. Um, so I'm uh, so grateful that you were able to come to the Raga Room and share all these wonderful experiences, Panditji. Uh, before uh, we sign off, uh, this is one question that I'm always interested in knowing a composition or something that's very close to your heart and why and if you could also sing a little bit uh, something that is uh, you know has made an impact on you uh, well um, to be honest with you i love everything that i sing so i cannot uh, <laughs> sing out one particular composition that i love most but for the uh, for the quick benefit and with the limited yes. uh, resources we have at our time i'll quickly sing a composition Thank you. Yeah. Mm. This is in Rag Darbari, which I learned from uh, this particular composition. I learned from Pandit Sangmeshwar Gurao, who taught me in the Karnataka University when I was doing Sangeet <coughs> Panditji, heartfelt gratitude and thanking you from the bottom of my heart for sharing such beautiful uh, words of wisdom with us. And I think all it takes is a thought to enter our mind and uh, the minds have the power to grow that thought exponentially. With this conversation, just like so many others, I'm sure uh, there will be many stimulated minds that will want to travel to this melodic space. So, yeah, I'm a great optimist. Uh, I'm a great optimist, no matter whether it is COVID or otherwise, this stream of classical music is going to continue. There are so many youngsters across 
with all forms of music they will continue the hard work done by the great masters in the past so the future is still very very bright for all of us thank you pandit ji thank you so much for coming to the nagar thank you bye
was of great fortune to be in the association of the wise. To absorb and learn and incorporate what we have learned reminds me of a shloka my grandmother used to chant. Satsangat se nissangatvam, nissangatve nirmohatvam, nirmohatve nischalatvam, nischalatve jivanamuktihi. With a good company, one attains detachment. With detachment, one gets rid of delusion. With freedom from delusion, one attains composure. With composure, we attain liberation. We thank Dr. Havildar for sharing such wonderful pearls of wisdom with us. We sincerely hope you enjoyed watching this episode. Please tune into Ragarum for more episodes coming your way from a place where the soul listens as notes speak. Thank you and have a wonderful day.